then take that, put it in a strainer in the house and put it in the sink and I'll wash it when I get in. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Christy. Welcome to my channel. I grow a lot of our food here to put up and preserve for the year um, here in Northern Alberta, Canada. I've been packing plants in and out of the house to get everything into the greenhouse. I need to pot some stuff up, but I ran out of pots. So I actually ordered a pallet of pl uh, nursery pots for in my greenhouse. And I thought it was going to be coming via a transport company on a pallet. Turns out <laughs> it got shipped via Canada Post. So I got a text message bright and early from my favorite ladies down at the post office. The ladies at the post office let me know that I do have a very large box ready to come pick up and I might want to pull around back. So <laughs> I'm going to go get that done this morning so it's out of their hair. Well, it's really not that big of a box. I thought it would be much, much bigger considering what I ordered. What they told me it was going to be is uh, very different. wanted to get this out. Some of these pots go into different areas. Some go to the greenhouse, some go into the car garage, and some go into the farm office. So just kind of leaving stuff where I need them to be. But I ordered a lot of pots. I got some square ones. These ones fit inside of my water, water trays and my little trays. So these will be used for pot ups. And if I do decide to do seedling sale with some of the seedlings, the extra starts I have, these will be what I'll pot them up into. There's quite a few, as you can see in there. So the company that I ordered all of these pots for, from for my greenhouse and like the nursery pots for the greenhouse and such and the flower farm, they come from a Canadian company that is in Ontario and it is called Holland Industry. Here's the card here, you can see that there. In total, what I ordered from Holland Industries is I got this sprayer. So the Rainmaker three gallon, so 11 liter sprayer, pump sprayer was $44.99 Canadian. These are Canadian dollars. I ordered 200 grower basic, um, three and a half inch pots, which the, these are the, those are the square ones, which is this size. So I ordered 200 of these and I paid 50 cents a pot for these, so my total was $100. I also ordered some of these one gallon plastic pots. There's 200 one gallon pots, and I paid 75 cents a pot for these, which was $150. And then the big mamas, these are two gallon plastic nursery pots. I paid a dollar per unit. So I have 75 of these, so the total was $75. The shipping, the shipping was supposed to be $67.09 Canadian dollars was what they quoted me. And when I purchased on the website, I sent them with my invoice. It was $67 to ship it here in Alberta from Ontario. However, they contacted me and said, we are sorry, we cannot ship it to you for that price. Um, there was a conflict with the website. They had not calculated the shipping to where I'm at. Um, and so it and ended up having to send them an additional 70, I think it was 73 or $74. I think it was 74 bucks um, on top of my 67.09 for shipping. So all in all, it's much, much better than what I expected to pay for this, these pots. I know they're plastic and 
I, you all know me, I don't like putting plastic into the world. These I use over and over and over again. These are an investment for my farm that unless something happens and they're damaged, I will have these for the next 10, 15 years to use. I, in fact, I have some of the very original pots from like when I was like 18 years old. And that was a long time ago, you guys, a long time ago. So plastic pots like these last a very long time as an investment. These are definitely going to be something that are netter. <laughs> um, special net is up there being silly. Anyway, their investment. And so, um, and I wanted to have a separate sprayer for a foliar feeding. This one's larger. Um, I have one, I, I want to keep my sprayers very, very separate, one for pest control. If I need to use organic methods to spray for pests. And then I have another one for doing foil, foilier and I wanted them to look very different. I didn't want to have any that look similar. So I wanted to buy a different brand, a different, different look. I don't know how good this one is um, for the price of it. I'm kind of like, eh, cause the small ones are the price of what I paid for this one. So we'll see. I'll have to let you know if it works out or if it if it's any decent. So now the work begins to put stuff away. I actually went grocery shopping. So I haven't been grocery shopping in a month. And I went grocery shopping today. I spent $100, come out with four bags of six bags of groceries and I better go put them away. I'm not going to do an unboxing or a, or a shopping video when I bought video, but I was impressed. Actually, the prices were not that bad. I was expecting with the fuel going up and all the stuff that the prices would be much, much higher. And um, they were for some things, but I found a lot of sales today. So um, I, I was very impressed with the groceries. I went on a good day. So... Now I gotta get to work. What are you doing up there? Hey, why are you on my truck? Huh? Are you closer to the birds? Closer to the birds that are flying over? Why? You're making muddy footprints all over my pickup. Oh, now there's two. How lovely. Just, yeah, just relax. We don't need to go anywhere. We don't need to do anything. Enjoy your time lounging around. Have a cat nap. Go for it. Oh, you too. Just walk all over my hood. It's okay fine. I like having cat prints on my truck. I really do. I can't even be mad at her because she's so soft and fuzzy. But look at those dirty paws. Okay, go, go, go. Go on. Go on. <sighs> You're making me do this. Did that, did that wake you up, Max? Did that wake you up? Oh, it's a poor boy. Hey, the poor boy. You're so old and so, so stiff and sore. Yeah, good boy. I actually made a delicious dinner, by the way, last night. I meant to record it as kind of like a pantry challenge because I'm kind of getting low on groceries in the house and I've been resorting to last minute sort of food preparation for dinner. I've been in the garden so much last night, it, the day got away on me and I come in and I realized it was five o'clock. And so basically what I did is I took some um, chicken breast that was in the freezer and I threw it in the quick cooker or to many of you, you call yours an Instapot. And I threw that in there quickly and I found some pepper sauce out of my freezer that I had made a year ago or so from um, like as my garden was coming in, I was making sauces and I froze some. So I just grabbed a package of that frozen stuff, threw it in. I threw a jar of pickled peppers. Like I had some banana peppers that I had pickled, like spicy ones. And I threw that jar in with the juice and everything with the chicken. And I added a little bit of water, pressure cooked it. 
And then I served it with some of our homegrown lettuce from our greenhouse and from our cold frame greenhouse. And um, I served that on a pita and we had carrot sticks. And what else did we have with that? We had carrot sticks. Oh, and homemade, I found when I was rummaging in my freezer, I found some homemade tater tots and Tyson loved them. I don't like them because of like, they seemed really dry, but he gobbled them right up and he's like, I really like these. You they taste just like tater tots, like the store bought ones. So I'm definitely going to use up some of my potatoes that are in my stores, like my storage potatoes coming up. I really want to make some time and do a little video for you guys. Um, with what I did. I mean, I kind of remember what I did to make those tater tots, but man, that's a good way to use things up. And it was so quick and easy. I like, I got to sit down and put my feet up for a bit last night and it was wonderful. It was so glorious. You know, it's that time of the year, you know, right? You know, so it's any moment you can get where you could have a minute to yourself to relax. It's, it's really great. But, okay, let's get these groceries put away. So if you can't like rummage through your pantry and find some stuff, that's the point. That's the point of living this lifestyle to me anyways, is to be able to just whip something up really quick from what you got. And I love that kind of creativity. I don't know about you guys, but I love doing that kind of stuff. And um, last minute, I don't like meal planning. It stresses me out. <laughs> go side. Wanna go side? Let's go. Oh, look, the guineas are here. Hello, guys. Did you go for a morning stroll? Ah, <laughs> uh, I need another coffee to wake up here. I'm a little bit of sleep still. Um, hey guys. <laughs> they like coming into the lean-to. They love it. There's all kinds of little bugs and things for them to get into. The round pan is actually thought out, which is wonderful. That means these guys, they might actually get to get put to work and do a little bit of spring tune-ups this spring. One of the things that I need to work on is um, I need to plant the rest of my tomatoes and peppers into the greenhouse to get them going. And I also need to plant a few more of the um, cold hardy annuals outside. I have a few perennials I need to put in to pots, which is what I was waiting for. I did work on some of my lilies the other day. I plant, planted some lilies where I'm able to kind of control the temperature. I'm going to be planting more dahlias and stuff in crates so that I can have a succession of blooms for my florists and wedding season coming up. Um, so it's just a lot of these little projects to do, but I did find that with my lilies, there was some damage to a lot of the lily, the like the sprout part of the lily, um, and it was knocked off. So those are trash. Um, they won't grow for me this season and I don't know if they'll actually even grow at all. So there's just a lot of little things that take time. <laughs> and at this time of the year, it seems like hurry up and wait kind of energy. And for me, it's kind of chaotic, but it's exciting and exhilarating all at the same time. So I'm glad that I am making progress. At least there's some progress. I had all these big plans today to do a Lysianthus planting tutorial kind of thing. Not really a tutorial, but what I'm doing um, to plant my Lysianthus for my cut flower farm. And unfortunately, those plans got thrown out the window. I will show you what's actually going on. As you can see, we still have quite a bit of snow here. It is just starting to thaw out in our yard here, but I'm gonna show you what's going on. So I originally was planning to put ranunculus in this planter. We call this the pool planter. I had um, penicetum grasses in here last year. I had like the dark or the black night and the purple fountain grass along with some um, del uh, it was Silver Falls. It's frozen, really, really frozen. So I started cleaning it out and I think by tomorrow I should be able to get the majority of the root balls out because we're supposed to have a rain shower and I think that would help tremendously. Um, but yeah, they are so frozen. 
Look at this ice. Of course, because these are protecting solid ice. So, um, gonna have to wait. It's starting to thaw. Like I can get the, well, not really. So yeah, plan B. Plan B is in the works, but I do need to get this grass out of here so it thaws a little bit quicker, but I'm gonna show you what I'm planning to do. I ordered these from Amazon and they weren't that expensive. They were the cheaper ones and they fit just perfectly. They also have little clamps, but I'm gonna show you. Um, Lysianthus is one, yeah, see, but Lysianthus is one of the, I don't know how it fluked out that it fits just perfectly, but it does. But Lizzie's are one of the cool, cool flowers. So that means they like it when it's cooler and they have a very long season. So if I want blooms in August, I need to get them in the ground this week, no later than next week. So they, they need to go in here and they need to go under uh, these little low tunnel cover, like covers. I'm just going to use a, it's a cloth. Um, I bought it also on Amazon. I couldn't get any of the, the, it's so noisy in there. I'm just gonna come outside. I couldn't get any of the other stuff, the commercial stuff um, in the quantities or for the price I wanted in a lot of places that sell bulk. They were sold out already by the time I knew what, what I was doing this year um, with Lysianthus. So I just got, these are eight by 24. So these will be plenty. I have several of these here um, and I can double up. I also have plastic. So we usually get a dump of snow in May because this is the end of April, not even the end of April. We have a little bit to go in April and it's quite, Brassy definitely wouldn't be planting this early here in our climate. Um, I feel very confident that with um, the stuff that I have, uh, we should be able to manage this. I would, I should have, because there is, I have eight 72 trays of Lysianthus to go into that planter, which won't quite fill it, I don't think. I should have room for um, at least two trays of ranunculus, maybe, th maybe three or two and a half trays, depending on how I crunch them in there. Um, and then I might actually even have some room for stock if I plan this right, because I do have some stock over there and have some really sad snapdragons that they're not doing good. Um, I'll show you something here. These snapdragons, when I planted them, I planted them in a seed starting soil and the soil was not hydrating properly. So these guys were off to a really rough start. Um, I'm going to try to pull them out of these trays and get them planted in some place. Not sure where yet, um, maybe inside the greenhouse, but likely outside. I think they need some cooler cooler weather they look like they're stressed out from being in the greenhouse so they seem to perk up a little bit since i brought them out to harden off but yeah so where i live in canada we typically do not have roses here they don't winter over very well we can do canadian shield roses which is something that i am putting in this year my order actually my wholesale order that i had ordered it was post uh not postponed it was canceled um there was a crop failure i guess because there was some flooding um in in bc where a lot of these roses come from and so I did not get my bulk order, but I did order some retail because I really want to get a few plants established this year for cutting next year, hopefully. I'm going to see if I can winter them over and whether or not it's worth me um, investing in a lot of these Canadian Shield roses. Um, they are beautiful, they are hardy, but uh, we'll see. So what I do in place of roses um, is the Lysianthus. Now Lysianthus, because they are a cool season flower, they do amazing here. The problem is, is we have such a short season that we have to, we have to like babysit them. We have to like, they're, they're like a children. They're like children, they're like your child. <laughs> so you have to like love them and nurture them and feed them 
like fish emulsion. We ended up having a bit of a rain shower, which is awesome because it knocked a bit of the snow down. So I didn't get a lot of the projects that I wanted to do outside done. It's a little bit wet. So I am just going to do this and that, get the rest of my day dealt with and <laughs> go pick Chaz up from badminton. And you know what? I think it's one of those days where I might actually get caught up in the laundry, call it a day, call it good and start again tomorrow. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. So much love. Bye for now.